Hello, Joseph and Xiaoming. JJ. You. JJ. JJ, no. What? Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Three Minute Tea. Today we are at Ice Itch. Ice Itch at, at Coven. At Coven. So today I have with me Joseph and Xiaomi. What's up guys? Um, and uh, we have a very interesting conversation today. Very, very interesting. Juicy! <laughs> uh, I guess we, we kind of broke a few like brains today. <laughs> Trying to, cells are like... Yeah, yeah, it's diet and everything. But I think what I really appreciate is that we are all um, wanting to learn from each other. And we respect each other. And that is the, always the basis for an interesting Discussion. That is the only. <laughs> okay, so Joseph, what do you think we covered today? I mean, in in three words, we covered a lot um, about personal ideologies mm. and how that might affect our work. We also talked about our own personal like basis that we fight for. Mm. Be it you fight for yourself or for the community, and also about um, our own subconscious influences. Right. Be it if you know know it or you don't. Know Interesting. Okay, tell me, what do you think we uh, we talked about today? Uh, I think we focused on identity, not not just as a designer, but as a human, and also the community around us and how we draw inspiration from them, as well as like everyone's different paths and how we can learn from it and by listening to others. Mm. And I think for me, um, I, I really greatly respect that we all um, hold our own identities and ide ideologies true to our own being and that we are proud. I think that's a good thing that we have, that we are proud about our own origins and what we stand for. And I, I, think, I think one of the biggest takeaways or I think one of the biggest lessons that I learned from this conversation is that um, it is vital for a designer to have an agenda. At the same time, it's also vital that we um, respect the context and the audience that we're trying to speak to and the people that we're trying to learn from and how do we also continuously mature um, as designers um, and evolve our own identity with the times and with the context okay so very very hefty and I don't know how I'm gonna edit this episode <laughs> um, hopefully you guys learn something interesting and stay tuned and this is the episode Yes. Yeah, I can remove it. Uh, okay. So what we have over here today? Uh, we have this. Wait, we have to show this. We have to show this. Wait, we already take everything. <laughs> we already took everything. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Hello, Joseph and Xiaoming. JJ. You. <laughs> JJ. JJ. What's that? What's that? Never no. <laughs> okay, so maybe just a quick introduction. I think um, we can start with Joseph first because Xiaoming has already been on the show before. Hi, Joseph. Where Hi. are you from? Uh, I'm Joseph. I, I'm also from Sanyang Polytechnic. I met Asher because he was my junior in an STN club. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, at first, I have to be honest, I didn't really. Like you, <laughs> but you came off, you came off a bit, uh, a bit strong at the start. So no, the next goal no. were like, let's, let, let's watch this guy for, for a while because we haven't actually really given out any leadership roles yet. But yeah, you're taking in charge. Is it? Yeah. So we're just like, oh, why am I not? But then after a while, we're just like, okay, this guy has potential. I mean, you you earn you earn your stripes, so right? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I don't know how about you changed my mind. Yeah. I think we just became friends, ah. Uh. And everybody else was just like chilling, they were just waiting. Right, right. Yeah. And I was like, let's go. Someone that raises up his hands all the time. Because that gave us a, a red flag. A red at flag? The start because, Too enthusiastic. Because, because the previous president quite problematic. Uh, 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 yeah, maybe let's not go there today. <laughs> Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, we have Xiaoming. Xiaoming, we um, had her on the season. The new season, is it? Huh? The new season? Yeah, I think it was season two. Um, and you were the one that was the designer for the logo. Yay. And then this is the first time in real life camera. Yeah, like non CV. And it's funny also because, I mean, Xiaoming was also in that um, club, and that's how we also met. I don't remember the first half of NTN Club. I wasn't even involved. It wasn't really much happening, was it? Because I wasn't really into it at the start. Like, mm -hmm. I was always people like... Because uh -huh. you know all the seniors, they're not very like... Warm towards the juniors also. It's not like 
I mean, you come with Okay. <laughs> so, I, I guess I'm a graduate now, like most of us are. Mm. And we're graduating in May. Mm. Yeah, so I'm also a VC, a visual comm student. So, we are all literally like the same design school. Yep. Yeah, so uh, I finished my internship uh, like the start of this year, so around February. Mm. So, I'm currently uh, teaching a uh, dance class. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna start my part time next next Tuesday. And yeah. your dance class is ballet. Yeah. Where I'm at currently, I am one year into NS. Speed deprived. Mm. And I am a PMP sergeant. And we might meet in um, NS. I'm sure we will. I hope you, not. You know? <laughs> I'll, I'll, come and, I'll come and find your bunk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why, thank you. You guys will be senior and junior in the oh, NS yes. Ah, uh, oh. shit, here we go again. <laughs> I think that's very interesting. I mean, that both of y'all are like taking um, inspiration uh, of sorts from your different um, experiences. I mean, yours from dance, from ballet, yours from NS and other other life experiences. What do you think? Um, like, how do we mature outside of the institution? Because I mean, as designers, you can't only be um, learning from you can't learn design from book, right? You can't you can't just look at certain things and look from certain like Pinterest and then oh, I I know design now. And and I think I think what's maybe what's your take on the conversation on like design um, lifestyle, you know, as a, a way of life. Uh, I mean, I'm go first. Mm. Uh, so I firmly believe in what you consume, what you create. Mm. It also applies to design, mm. and it's very important to always surround yourself with things that I'll say value. Right. Like I I would try my best to stay off content. Or topics that are stale, and hmm. try to like touch on and search for things that are more um, like off kilter, like weirder <coughs> and different. So this way, the ideas that I create are also weirder and different. Why? What? What's the point of being weird? Um, I mean, what's the agenda with being weird? Or like unusual, hmm. I would say, hmm. because it's just generally more interesting. Hmm. And I know, I like it. I, I like know, it. I, I like know, it. I, 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 I enjoy weirder. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy weirder. Like your Instagram Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. I mean, I mean, like sometimes when I look <laughs> at your Instagram stories, it's like kind of like questionable, it's like, questionable. Yeah, what was what was he? Where was he before he posted this? Right, right. What was he like searching? <laughs> yeah, um, just there are some I, on the internet that have very weird shit. Yeah, this, yeah. This out there. Yeah. Uh, is it like a Reddit? I, I live there. Uh, yeah. uh, that corner of the internet. <laughs> yeah, Reddit definitely. I, I love Reddit because mm. you can basically pick up literally anything and everything. Mm, right, right. Uh, normally, I like find all knitting. Mm. Over like, in NS, I learn knitting embroidery. Lovely. Damn. Uh, love it. Uh, no, not the nothing. The moment when I tell people that, fun, then they're so surprised. Wait, I always no, want to pick it up, but it's always so right. daunting. Right. My, my brother Isaiah also does it. Isaiah so he makes, he knits, he takes all the time. I wish I could. Yeah. No, it's craftsmanship. I think that's very, very, it's very important to have craftsmanship. I just love learning different mediums. Mm. And for mm. example, like embroidery and uh, sewing mm. can go hand in hand with book binding. Mm. And, right. Uh, what's that? Upholst- like, what's that? Up. A whole tree. Like repairing clothes. Uh, right, like right. right. Um, oh no, upcycling. Like, yeah, upcycling, that's the word. Upcycling. <laughs> 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 Brain yeah, fart, brain fart. <laughs> my, my vocabulary is yeah. not limited. <laughs> Welcome back to civilization. All you know is like, oh, straight not, left, down, look it up. It'll be like that. Uh, Welcome back. Welcome worry, back. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna experience it as well. I hope not, though. But it'll probably be the case that. Do you think, do you think that you devolve intellectually? When you go to an S. Oh, he's, he's not yeah. a very it's not, aggressive. It's not a will, it's a. Yes, you, when you, you definitely will. Uh, I mean, do you think it's possible to create conversations within the, the platoon and stuff like that? Or oh, nobody just has any energy for that? <laughs> okay, the thing uh, I realized when I entered uh, the NS is that coming from a design background, mm. you're normally surrounded with in a bubble who are very open minded people. Right. Mm. But suddenly when you go to NS, right, mm. it's harder to talk about topics mm. that are more sensitive. Mm. I, like racism. LGBT issues, right, right. they're not really that spoken about, mm. and sometimes this can cause a lot of issues within mm. uh, within the the, the company la, yeah. and within the other social things. It's very sensitive. Mm. I think I mean there's also being 
Yeah, like, I mean, also have to be appropriate at the right time, and sometimes maybe some people are not really. Uh, but, you, but you really meet people from the lowest all to the walks, highest. All, all walks. walks. Yeah. All walks. Like you take like a random sampling mm. of uh, the Singapore population. <laughs> Literally, like, like <laughs> one of each kind. Oh, well. Quite eye opening. Uh. Right, and 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 how do we also like? channel that learning into also like future experiences I think that'll be very interesting uh, to be like the experience that really changes your perspective on like what does it mean to have a diverse audience I think sometimes we also as visual creators also we have to be more sensitive to a diverse audience like, interesting I'm, I'm also thinking of like that really provokes the thought of mm. how do I these are the people that I'm trying to reach right. these are my potential end users mm. and then it's kind of thing, how do I get my message to them when all this time I've been thinking that I've been what was that? Pandering to designers, but now right. I have this new set of people that don't really listen to the message. Mm. And I'm just trying to like judge the first layer, right? They don't just, see it from a designer's mm. point of view. I'm trying to peek into their their mindset and mm. see and like see how I can actually get the message to them. Mm. Something can be quite frustrating. Mm. Well, what do you think about that, Tell me. I mean, what do you think about the relationship between the, the, the visual artist and the audience? I mean, what does that mean? I mean, I, I, a lot of the times, like, especially during studio mm. like, sessions, right? Um, my lecturer always tells me, like, you know, Miss Hong, she always tells us, like, you don't design with a, a designer's mindset, mm. you design as a, the consumer themselves. Yeah, so because a lot of the times you assume that they would know what you're designing right. and you're assuming with a designer's perception. But then when you're designing, you're designing to the crowd, you're de- designing to the public and most of them are not design-centric anymore. You know? So it's, it's a little bit like useless and not productive if you're designing as like um, just from your own perception. Are we creating art or are we creating design? I think there's two different programs like, for the types of works that we create. If it's art, then it's very subjective. I mean it is focusing on the artist himself yeah. and then the, it, it, he just puts it out there as his own manifestation mm-hmm. like, and articulation however if it's designed there is a program or there is a certain function towards it that the users themselves have to bring that so-called meaning towards it mm-hmm. instead of the artist bringing it so i think it's very 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 interesting mm-hmm. that we have this kind of um, dialogue because both of us as designers right we have um agendas i think that's that's one thing that we have and I, I, I think, and I'm very, very proud that both of us, right, and all three of us have, all four of us. <laughs> <laughs> it is important that designers have an agenda. Because if not, then you don't really have a point in existing. If you don't have an agenda, and there you don't have uh, um, something that you are standing for, um, you are just uh, noise. You're just going with the flow. Right, and you're just doing what the client wants, and not really trying to influence and we have to appreciate that we have a responsibility to um, carry our agenda properly at the same time balance that with the needs of the market but isn't there isn't there like a line between client work and personal <coughs> work right i think there should there, there should be it's like that classic uh, I, like idea of working for as a designer for a cigarettes company right the ethical side. yeah hmm. i think also come into play right I like this conversation. Okay. Let's keep it. Let's keep it going. I come from a Christian background, mm. but I'm not Christian. Right. And I derive my morals from reading philosophy. So you don't. This doesn't have to be a confession. This doesn't have to be a confession. Right. Right. A confession. No, 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 first, um, <laughs> I always say like, oh, the Bible this about that. Mm. But I can. I I hate everything. I find things that are. What, what I define what is good and bad from philosophy and moral ethics. So after reading you everything, culture yourself everything is relative. Mm. You know, good and bad is relative. Mm. Rape used to be legal how many years ago? Racism used to be legal how many years ago? <laughs> it's still legal now, by the way. Right. Why? Why? Uh, calm down. Calm down. Okay. Like, okay. 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 Is there any stance? Yeah. Everything is relative. Right. And and it's and it's based upon the cultural, social, cultural context that 
if you are if you say a certain message, then after you perceive as more liberal, and you, if in a different context, then oh, you're very very conservative. So it's always a, a shifting. A shifting it's a stand. spectrum. It's not it's not a shifting stand, but it's just that different contexts are, are encompass different so called um, parameters. I would say that right in a certain social context, that they, they encompass a certain um, moral um, parameters. Another one that's a difference with moral parameters, and then we have to appreciate. The, the nuances and the social context before we also speak um, and before we try to um, create conversation within that community. And that is our responsibility. What do you think of that? To be appropriate and to be tuned. If not, if not you're creating work that is irrelevant or you're creating work that is self-serving instead of serving for the client or the audience. I would say, yeah, that I agree to that because some people's portfolios are catered or Tune. It's the word tu- yeah, curated. Mm. Curated to suit a certain demographic, yes. The business, the client that they're trying to attract. Right. Right. There's also tuned to their own personal interests. Like for example, if I was looking to be hired by by music artists, I would cater my entire portfolio to be based around album art and stuff like that. I think we, we sometimes we if, if you're not aggressively competitive, um, you just let like whoever wants to buy you buy you, right? But we have to also curate our own market base. What's your take on that, Tiami? Yeah, it's like if you if you have your portfolio that's catered to everyone, then no one's gonna really reach out. So if you want to target a specific company, you curate towards it. So then you yourself are actively reaching out to the company. And you don't just wait for people to just pick you up and like wait for them to discover you. Because like what are the chances? Like the internet is so big. If you have an e-port for them, what are the chances of the company actually yeah, finding you? That's the beauty phone? of like social media platform these days. Right? You get to hyper curate a specific yeah. type of audience. Right. Like I know a lot of people unfollow me every single day, but I still post the same shit. The because same... it's you, it's you. Yeah, so, right. yeah, so I, I, I don't care because mm. I'm happy that, that you can audience. express yourself. Loves the stuff that I posted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they also look at like random ass followers that are like just there for now. Do you think this is a right there, this is know? the phenomenon of the internet and and the ability to engage directly? And if we are that direct with our audiences, I mean, it really changes the relationship of the viewer, the audience, and the art. I think what we're talking about. I think what we're talking about is um, the relationship between personal identity the social cultural context that we're trying to speak to and the audience. The importance of identity, I think uh, both of us, we, we, okay, we, uh, we went to VC, right? Let's say, let's say we both went to VC. Right, you know how to do, VC. yeah, we both went to VC. You know how to do Premiere Pro, I know how to use Premiere Pro. You know how to use Photoshop, I know how to use Photoshop. In the end, why would the client um, hire Joseph instead of me? Right, it's a specialist and generalist kind of thing. It's because they, they like Joseph, because the way he sees the world, the way he sees the problems, the way he, um, um, talks about certain things with a certain uh, uh, maturity and empathy. Likewise, the likewise, so, likewise, right? So, so and and that's the importance of having um, designer identity and to really understand who are you, what is your morals, what is your ethics, what is your convictions, and what is your agenda. And I feel like when we have this certain um, conviction, we we then have a certain um, uh, prerogative right you know to say something you're not just a, a voice in the wind you know there's a reason yeah to yeah yeah for example for example the way i will introduce myself and wherever i am right now i will introduce myself as i i represent five names being raised to a certain position um i'm raised by certain people for me is um, five names um, that i try to bring together with me um god i'm just a christian who is i'm a this, i'm the son of a ong Right, mm-hmm. I am a homeschooler. I am a designer representing SDM, and I am a Singaporean. So wherever I go, I try to um, so-called have those kinds of um, uh, influences or certain people that I represent. I think when we also um, associate ourselves with a greater um, community, we are more relevant that way, and not just some lone ranger and Ronin. Well, what do you think on, on the on the topic of identity and being a designer? Personally, I wouldn't really represent mm. 
represent anyone in particular. Okay. I think I I just try to do push for a better life for everyone. Just design for good. Recently, uh, I've been working on this project that tries to raise funds for um, like shareholders to find and, and target, let's say, like fund, fundraiser groups that actually have good causes and will specifically uh, donate money to them. Maybe are you are you going are you going with the angle that uh, more on individualism, and then for me me is more communalism. I think that's 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 interesting. No, huh? I was more about individualism. Right, right, and then more for me is more I'm I have more uh, a more communalist streak in me. More. It is interesting. It is interesting to understand that we have certain um, philosophies or certain um, infatuations with uh, some uh, ideologies. Yeah. So it's interesting to have an ideology and to understand what is your ide- ideology. What do you think your ide- ideology is? Or maybe you haven't even thought about that. <laughs> no, no, but we read a lot. We read a lot. That's why we can talk like that. Yeah. We, we, we big brain. We big brain. <laughs> Communalism and individualism. It's it's on the and it's on opposite spectrums, but we are both very respectable. Designers, we're not fighting for the same client. We do different things for the same client, and that's why we have to stick to our own uh, genres. Maybe you think so? Are we competing for the same client? I don't think so. No, right? We're not. Now that you say, I do best to have an agenda. Yeah, you do. No, you have to have an agenda. If not, you have no point talking. And it's, and it's good that you have an agenda. If not, you're just a, just, just a voice in the wind. Just, I'm learning new things <laughs> during this podcast. It happens all the time. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's like, what's my purpose in life? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we gotta give him a break for a while. <laughs> he looks like he's, he's, about, he's about borderline crisis. I'm also borderline crisis. Hey, hey, I guess that's what I do. Uh. That's my thing. <laughs> Okay, into crisis. Yeah. <laughs> what are you really? <laughs> what do you think you are? What do you think? I mean, where this conversation has gone? What do you like about it? I always enjoy listening to people talk about like identity and where they stand because you listen to people like or like you listen to everyone's path and you see how you you align or how you differ and from there I guess it helps you. Get a better sense of things of like where you belong and the people around you because that's where you go you touch on people around you you get inspiration from them and because you're in the like in the same community like that's where you go that's where you're gonna learn and it's important to listen to people and listen to their standpoint which is like on whether you're like uh, you prefer to have an identity or whether you prefer not to and why that is. Pride lah, pride with that, that I, I have this, you know. Yeah. yeah. And also, just the way they think. Mm. Because I think as a designer also, you really have to appreciate the human in it. Right. Yeah, you can't just uh, focus on, oh, let me just find uh, works of Pinterest to refer to. You. Right. Yeah, you find inspiration from the people around you and right. the way they think. And those people end up being your audience as well. Yeah, so I guess that's really important. While we're on the topic of uh, designers and their identity, mm. One thing I really struggled with transitioning out of school was who am I <laughs> outside not, of the school? Yeah, who am I outside right. of design? Yeah, and I really struggled with that mm. because I've always been like nose to the like, nose to the rhinestones. Right. I don't know what they're saying. No, basically, I'll, I'll always be working. Right. And after I stopped working, I looked back and I realized I was really lost afterwards. So that was that was when a crisis hit me la, Like I, I was, I need to find something to fill the gap, and I realized that journaling really helped to like meditation and just writing down. I agree. Every day. I agree. I agree. He's a big fan of journaling. I agree. <laughs> I mean that's why I picked up uh, book writing right. because I realized that there wasn't one journal that could fit all my needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It's this, uh, this type of Japanese or uh, it's a traveler's journal. And then uh, yeah, you can like replace and 
love it, man. I think it's very, very interesting that um, while we uh, appreciate our own identity and, like, like Jeremy said, um, understand where we are within our so-called social context, it's that the key point of being a listener, despite of everything, that we don't so-called hold our, uh, we're not entitled towards projecting certain ideas, but always listening, and that is a characteristic trait of a designer that we are able to 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 be inspired. I think when we see contrasting ideas, not as something offensive, but something inspiring. No, yeah. When you start to see that that wow, somebody actually has such a weird idea of how society could run. And Some, you've never thought of that. You've never thought of that, never thought of that yeah, before, and it sounds radical. It sounds very uh, provocative, but. I don't know, I think when we are able to see the beauty in a new idea mm. and not be offended by Correct it. The dots. Yeah, and, and not that, just using linear, linear And so. that to me is what being open minded is. To see the beauty. Oh the segue back yeah, to the We just oh. Oh. Right, don't you think? Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Interesting conversation. So we have finally defined what we thought. Uh, this is a this is a discussion. This is an open ended discussion, and this can continue on for everybody. Uh. And hopefully, everybody who's listening also will also ask themselves, you know, what does it mean to be an open minded designer? You know, even though you have conservative um, values, maybe if you have liberal values, you have communalist values, you have individualist values, you know, what is your place in this whole narrative that is constantly and perpetually evolving? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> just surprised everything that we talked about. I mean, what's up? He, uh, he had two seasons to become this host. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, something good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. He did. Joseph is so cool. Joseph is so cool. Right, let's segue back to the King of the Manor. Come, come, come. Fascinating. Okay, I think that's that's I think I think that's that's all for today. I think I think we have enough for people to think about. I think for one thing I'm very appreciative that um, though we come from different backgrounds and that we appreciate each other's different backgrounds, we can still have an open conversation and we can still learn from each other because we have respect. I think what is missing so much in the today's conversation is the lack of respect uh, for different views. Um, we think somebody's other idea is just wild for the sake of being wild. And, and when we lose that respect of people, we ourselves also dehumanize ourselves. Because we are all people at the same time, all of us have flaws, all of us have shortcomings, and we cannot think of ourselves to be higher than somebody else. We should always be so-called humble enough and willing enough to listen, like Tiamming said. So, and that's how we also continue to mature ourselves. I think that's where we all are trying to get to, a more mature level of being a designer and a citizen and a proponent and component of society yeah so when we appreciate that we are trying we're all trying to grow and we're all moving forward then that's when we are doing everybody a favor i think just on everyone's different path of growth right and be where if you're a designer i don't know how he's taking a break like, <laughs> with, with pizza yeah so be, if you're a designer if you're not it's good to always listen because uh, in your journey to question yourself, you, have, you always have to reflect on others with, with others around you as well. Yeah, and not just be stuck in your little bubble because it's very important I feel. Yeah, it's to always listen because even if you're in the same community or same social space, everyone has different mindsets. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's important that on the different paths, you still look at other people, you still listen and you still communicate with people. Instead of just going on your path alone and just questioning yourself in a midlife crisis, right? Yeah, right. Because you can kind of get uh, reflection and kind of get answers from people around you as well. Instead of just um, being stuck all alone in the echo chamber. Yourself. Yeah. I think sometimes, yeah, that's that's. I, I really agree with Jiaming that we should never um, be caught in an echo chamber and then we just consume things that we like. Yes. Sometimes I think it's important to seek that uncomfortable opinion and then to like learn something new. And that's what yeah. Jiaming is also saying. You don't. Sometimes you don't even realize. Yeah, yeah. Someone might just along the way. Yeah, and then maybe you're you're becoming radicalized or something. Maybe. (laughs) You never know. You never know. We're all susceptible. Last words from Joseph. Okay, so my (laughs) tapao. Yes. Finally. My tapao is that sometimes careful with what you say, and you never really know 
your own personal biases and unconscious uh, ideology influences influences in your own uh, thought processes things like um, just a good example is the darling Google effect where you're too stupid to realize that you're stupid right 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 and I live by that because I like that this, this means like that. that I don't uh, be, too, be too quick to judge people because who knows I might be too yeah. I might be too stupid to realize that I'm stupid right yeah. right the beam in your own eye that kind of thing <laughs> yeah, it's a motto that I live by right. uh, even in design because sometimes that makes me question I'm too hasty mm. it makes me understand that even though um, even though I might be stupid at something once I go past the curve I'll get better at it right, it's right. only a matter of time as long as I keep working at it I would know how to I, I, I posted this thing on my story the other day. Um, acceptance of ignorance is the beginning of knowledge. Yeah. That we when, when we accept that we don't know something and when we choose to humble ourselves to, to be in a posture to learn, that is when we can grow the most. I think people who think that they know everything or believe so strongly in their own ide- ideology or their own doctrine, right? And don't critique what they're actually doing and thinking and saying um, that is when you are become non self aware and then you start to. Yeah, that's the scariest thing, right? So, yeah. But I mean, all the, like, us saying all this, right, doesn't like put us on a pedestal anymore. No. We're all still learning. No. Yeah. Right. And it's important right. that, like, as a human, you grow and you, yeah, you humble yourself and you continue to, like, reflect. Like, right, right. Yeah, we're not that great designers, we're just saying. <laughs> But we know how to talk like <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's close this out. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, hope you guys learned something also. Play this over here in the background. The come, come, come in, come in. Yeah. Okay. Um, please uh, subscribe to YouTube uh, on Instagram and Spotify and like, subscribe, like, subscribe. So what was the thing that I said at the end? The bell icon. The bell icon. The bell icon. Uh, four hearts, big brains, and warm cuddles, and so yeah, thank you guys. PayPal also for his mental. Yes. 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 For my therapy. <laughs> now, now I set you on the path for for the life crisis. Thank you guys so much, and see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>